Hello, my name is Kirill Chipishka. I'm a 3D artist. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the magic button inside of Keyshot, which is photographic color correction. Uh, I have to be honest with you, I'm not the best at lighting the scenes in Keyshot and overall with lighting. So um, for people like me, uh, this option is super handy. It's, it's actually my absolute favorite feature in Keyshot right now. Um, what it does is it allows you to make those color adjustments uh, like exposure and stuff inside of Keyshot versus doing that uh, in Photoshop after the fact, like after you render. So it comes um, already installed and um, it's kind of like a built-in plugin basically uh, and uh, because of that when you have all these like editing tools uh, in one it allows you to fix the issues that are created by like not uh, not enough light or or bad lighting or uh, maybe sometimes you cannot match the shaders quite like in your reference uh, and uh, working with this in real time you can compensate and uh, make those adjustments uh, working in between adjusting the color of your texture uh, or like the base uh, and adjusting the values in the um, like it's kind of like post-production but like basically adjusting the values here so let's talk about it a little bit uh, one of the important features here is the image styles where any of these settings on the right uh, you can uh, turn them into presets and save them separately so that uh, it's basically I guess a non-destructive way to do this for your renders where you can uh, have this very base image like I have it right now it's set to basic and you can see that exposure is at 1 and the gamma is at 2 and no additional uh, uh, presets are uh, turned on or like no additional adjustments uh, but then once I start creating image styles it would allow me to save different versions of that image so I'd have this rendered then I have create some other photographic uh, color correction styles and uh, I will render them separately maybe blend in between or maybe uh, one set of photographic adjustments is good for the strap but another is good for the body of the watch so I can differentiate like this so even before I switch to photographic I can already fix uh, the issues with my lighting by adjusting exposure so for example going half a step in exposure um, we can just slide it and see what's happening going all the way up to two um, sometimes this this really helps bring out the detail like in certain areas uh, when your scene is underlit um, as well as uh, like exposure playing with exposure and gamma uh, back and forth sometimes uh, this helps to create um, a very specific render pass that you're trying to get so for example you're trying to separate uh, it's it's also actually possible in the uh, render um, window right here where you can do all kinds of render passes like lighting etc but you don't have any control over here but by adjusting uh, exposure and gamma you can actually get those highlights uh, out um, it sometimes it's it's very useful but I, I don't use it all the time so like if I keep this at default values like this um, I can also um, do this in the photographic version uh, but besides that denoise uh, the button is right here and by default when you turn and actually let me there's nothing to denoise because I've I've kept this running in the background let me turn this around press denoise you can see it kind of turns everything into a painting 
uh, but that's and and there's no setting here but in the image tab you can set the denoise blend and if you drop it slightly uh, it will be like um, a little bit better and with time as it's rendering um, it will come through as far as the details go um, but that's when you need to uh, get the images out quickly when you don't have time to render um, so I don't use that too often uh, the bloom uh, of course this is about blowing out the highlights and adding this you can see in this area right here if I zoom in maybe you get this glow which is dramatically increasing the look with emissive materials and this is key for that uh, so you can play around with this but for the for this watch um, sometimes you can do this in post like in Photoshop um, and most most of the time you don't really need that because uh, it's really easy to blow this out of proportion and like have everything blurry and uh, um, sometimes this looks uh, this helps removing the digital look sometimes it hurts uh, but what really helps remove the digital look and this digital by digital look I mean when things look very sharp uh, let me go back to this uh, camera that I had uh, minus minus the depth of field we don't really need that right now and I'm gonna zoom in so the digital like the signature render look or digital look is when everything is really sharp versus first of all things in real life don't look that sharp uh, and then most of the time we're talking about an image that was taken with a camera on either on film or I mean film is like what the 90s uh, on digital but everything is blurred out post-processed etc so that crispiness uh, it's a thin fine line between how crispy and how blurry you want things to be so bloom can be helpful but mostly if we go to the image tab um, adding a bit of chromatic aberration at lower values not to blow everything out of proportion uh, you can it adds um, this chromatic aberration usually happens with uh, lenses like on the edges of the lens on the borders between um, light where like light and dark so you can see in this area as you as I toggle it off and on it's gonna change and it really helps blend things together because it kind of adds that blur and at the same time it kind of blends the uh, little uh, pixels together uh, really helps with how highlights look especially on metal so we're gonna turn this around rotate and like in area right here it really really helps um, and so and of course you can change the operation bias like from blue to red and if we're talking about a different one uh, for metal I think it actually works both ways um, but let's talk about the best part so again going back to the shot that I wanted uh, minus depth of field for now and so when I switch to photographic um, I already have like a little bit of a preset here uh, having a white balance moving more towards uh, blue values uh, so if I do an ex extreme version you're gonna see that I have this control here and in certain cases as like in mine you can see that I was um, close enough with this leather and uh, metal in terms of the basic values but in photographic color correction using white balance sometimes can help um, like slightly bring it out uh, kind of like tone mapping maybe um, again uh, exposure 
really helps uh, have this the it, your image like not too dark, and then the play between exposure and contrast is what really makes a difference. Um, especially like the post-processed look of film and and cinematic look, where values are uh, sometimes the contrast is not as uh, dramatic, um, and where you can ex export or render two versions like low contrast high contrast and then just create a mask or manually uh, create this transition between high contrast to low contrast if I mean usually people who understand lighting much more uh, do that in post process so um, it's it's something that I, I go by how I feel or when I'm uh, matching the reference exactly and I cannot recreate uh, that reference look just by material and lighting so uh, you know uh, it helps me to see this right away and then of course uh, curve adjustments without the curve adjustments these are all slight but they they really really help so for example if you have overblown a highlight somewhere in this area Let's see if we can find this. I already have everything pretty much toned down, but you can uh, drop the white. If we turn this out, um, I'm dropping the white values sometimes to equalize the areas that are lit playing with uh, lights you can see the changes right here so both things really influence the final look so sometimes instead of playing with adjusting the roughness on the metal maybe you, the roughness is exactly how you want it uh, you can get this final tweak right here and then uh, saturation of course and vibrance getting that slightly up more vibrant uh, for those really visually juicy images um, and again same settings uh, denoise bloom chromatic aberration so um, I this is this is super helpful I like it the most because of this fluidity in the workflow uh, but at the same time uh, you have to be cautious and I don't really recommend having this on in the early stage of uh, developing the look. I, I will always stay with basic, no chromatic aberration, no blooms, no depth of field, uh, nothing like that. To get like the most that you can with just, uh, just lighting and, and shading and uh, relying and training your eye and then when everything is done I think for me this is uh, the last step um, to really uh, close the gap between how I was seeing uh, the reference and and uh, recreating or rebuilding the look inside a key shot uh, and it's also worth mentioning when you go to render and uh, let's say we start rendering this you have access uh, to the same uh, things right here so as your image is being rendered slowly and like it takes time you can actually create image styles as it's being rendered um, and uh, make all the necessary adjustments right here because you will see exactly what's happening in the final final uh, and then save once once it's done you'll be able to save those individually